Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about how we Christians as well as non-Christians can be so wrong in the way we talk about things and we might not even realize how we're contributing to the messed up world that we find ourselves in and we're actually a part of the problem and not part of the solution as we may be thinking that we are being uh, so first of all um, I just want to say that I've been reading a book about it's a response to uh, another book I'm like why am I so red here <laughs> sorry maybe I'll go down as I'm talking um, and so the the book is responding to the original book because of how uh, unfair and very divisive um, it worded things. And um, this is a very influential author. And so obviously whatever he says, it, it will reach many hands, many eyes will read this. It will impact a lot of people and the way that they see other Christians and things like that. So um, I started reading his book, um, the second book, the response to the first one. And I, I, I was like, hmm, you know, I'm listening, I'm listening. Of course, I'm agreeing with, yes, this is, that's wrong. And yeah, this is a better way. But I decided, okay, you know, I'm not really interested in like hearing what this uh first author has to say because I'm little by little I'm learning wow like there's um he's not as right as I was led to believe uh, you know um in his book the first author I'm just gonna say first author and second author and I'm not really trying to make it about this topic I'm planning on doing a a book review I've mentioned the book in my community tab so if you're curious you can go find out there but I don't want to make this video about that topic I want to make this video about so many like it, it you just see it everywhere not just in in this example so um in the first author the way that he and I really want I really really need to work on this i really want to be like in the middle you know like i want to be mindful there are good things about this author and there are not so good things about this author and the way i come across i don't want to come across like like i'm like i don't respect the good things <laughs> about the author so i'm gonna try to watch myself as i talk about this but the the first author mentions how impressionable a lot of people are uh, Christians and so when they come across this uh, what he considers like unbiblical teaching um, he's like well of course they fall for it because they're very impressionable well I bring this up because um, he might be right he might be right in so far as that when I uh, I was going to churches, different churches, all um, agreeing on the main things. You know, never a church that discounted the Bible at all or didn't hold it as the authority. Um, but there was this TBN channel on TV that I wanted to supplement my Bible reading. And instead of watching like what I would consider worldly shows at the time because I really wanted to grow in my walk with the Lord even as a teenager um, I I would turn on that that channel instead and unfortunately even though I wasn't learning necessarily those things from my churches um, I was like learning these things and uh, from TBN and I at times I would be like what that's so weird like that doesn't make sense like based off of what I've read that makes no sense um so sometimes i would just like turn it off i'm like okay <laughs> i'm not sure about that person but 
other times I'm like, I, I knew I was watching this because this person is funny and he's going to be entertaining. So I'm just going to watch. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, they're asking for so much money. Like I, this isn't even like entertaining. This isn't even edifying. I'm just going to like, it's not like I'm going to send money. Like I'm just going to turn it off. Right. So he, that author is right in as far as that. Um, I would say because I was limited in, in my knowledge of other Christians out there. Um, and I was just exposed to TBN on TV. Um, it was like, if that was all the Christians out there, you know, they represented all of, uh, Christ Christianity out there in all those other states of the United States and all that. So that, I would say, yeah, sure, I was very impressionable. But in the same sense that you could say that I was impressionable in that way, and not completely, because like I said, there were some things that I, I did not just follow blind faith. I'm like, mm, no, Bible, pretty sure it doesn't teach that. So I rejected some of those things. Um, but in the same sense, people, Christians, can be the same Christians, um, can be impressionable to certain other Christians who would say, well, we're, we're the real church. We're the real Christians. And so they can be impressionable in the sense that you're, that those guys are painting, um, uh, they're, it's like they want to portray all other Christians aside from them to, be like those guys on tbn and that's uh i think that's what the book is like and also i saw a uh, american gospel documentary that really impacted me and i've shared a little bit about on my last recent videos about my experience with that and um so like after watching tbn seeing a documentary that is highly critical of those guys, but the language that they use is like, um, it, it, in a sense, it's like, leave all of that and come join our, because we know what is biblical. And there's there was no mention of, uh, go check out this, uh, this uh, these other views and how these, these Christians out there um, that fall under the label, how they uh, rebuke those guys on TVN. There's no no real mention of that. So it's like watching American Gospel just kind of led me, oh, okay, they are the ones that know what is actually the gospel, what is biblical. Instead of saying, you know, that there are other, other Christians, like just without saying the quiet thing out loud. So in that sense, it's like Christians are also impressionable in, um, to not just fall into certain TBN types of, um following those type of people but they're also impressionable in following the other people that are quote unquote like the church um so i'm i'm saying these things because as i was listening on audible the the book from the first author which i decided okay you know what i'm just going to listen to the book just so that i um can say that i did hear both sides and honestly it's like I'm like wow 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 like if I would have heard this book or read this book when I was uh, first introduced to this author I would have had like uh, a lot of hmm uh, a lot of feelings about those other supposedly Christians. And I did kind of go through that a little bit, but not like had I, I'm pretty sure had I read this book, I would have had like an even worse like reaction and I would not have been where I'm striving to be uh, now. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit too. So, um, Aside from this example, I've been listening to conservative uh, 
YouTube channel is talking about politics ever since, like, I think it was during the times of Trump trying to be reelected and me realizing, oh, like, CNN is so biased, you know, I feel like I only get one view on, on those news, so I started, like, listening to the opposite, and then little by little, I'm like, whoa, like, it's so charged it's so charged with language that reminds me of for example that book that author that you just want to portray them as those extremists um and you're and you don't want to like just you don't want people to you want people to think of those guys as crazy people, lunatics, um, just you can't take those guys seriously and you don't really paint them out fairly, you know, like you're, you're not giving a, a balanced uh, presentation of your opponents. That's exactly what I want to say about the first one too. So... I'm thinking, what would the world look like if non-Christians, but especially if Christians, would be the light in the world? And they would demonstrate through their actions how we can share our beliefs, our views about church issues, the Bible, um, politics, um, in, in a way that is respectful to the people you disagree with and inviting for a respectful response to your respectful um, uh, words that you put out there. And I look back always to Jesus Oh, well, Jesus, um, he was the expert at communications. But, you know, sometimes we want to be exactly like him. And we're, it's almost like we want to see ourselves like if we're little Jesuses in the sense of, I know what they're thinking. I know what they believe. I know, I know, I know their hearts. I know who they are. And so I'm going to respond in the same way that Jesus responded, for example, to the Pharisees. Um, notice Jesus responded to Pharisees differently as you read the Bible. Sometimes he ignored them. Sometimes, you know, he, not just Pharisees, but the other religious leaders as well. Um, sometimes he gave a response. Sometimes he didn't. Everything was according to the Father's will, the Father's plan. And um, I think that's where we need to lean on God is the one that knows everything, has a plan, you know, not just for this world, but has a plan for each person that we're going to interact with. So that's when like we that's I believe with all my heart, that is what Christians ought to be like and non-believers. um I think that they're they're also capable of just coming to the realization that I can't read someone's mind. I I might not know who this person is. I might not know their background, their story. And so if I knew the things that I don't know, my perception might shift. Um, the way I come across to this person might be different. Um, my arguments, I might word them in a different way. So there is this whole thing out there in the world. Um, and I, I don't want to say that I know because that's, that's what I'm trying to get away from. 
I don't want to say I know what's behind all of these authors' intentions and whatnot, or these YouTube conservative people, you know, I know exactly what they're after. But, but the reality is that we do live in a world that is highly driven by money. And um, we can't ignore that a lot of people are ambitious. A lot of people are uh, have a sinful tendency towards that, towards greed. And um, so just recently, I, I learned through some little fa fallout or drama that was going on, the YouTube conservative channel that I watched very regularly... Um, I found out that these guys have million dollar contracts <laughs> and here I am thinking oh you know I'm just listening to this poor you know underdog youtuber but no these this channel these guys are making millions and so it makes sense that whatever your goal is whatever your beliefs sure like you might be fighting the right reasons. Um, and that's all ad admirable. And that you're bold. And that you're willing to sacrifice even the safety, perhaps, of your life, your family. Um, but there's a realization that in the YouTube world, if you want to make money, there are certain things that you need to do. In social media, there are certain things that will get the algorithm to get more views. And according to The Social Dilemma, a documentary on Netflix, the more you get people angry, the more that you get uh, visible on social media. And that that's just the way it is. People will respond more to things that upset them. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense why... Um, a lot of these people that are wanting to build their platforms for whatever reasons it makes sense that they would want to provoke these feelings of disgust anger because that's going to keep you coming back and i just don't think it's worth it because you might be making your money you might be sharing your message that you believe is the truth but how are you leaving this world and christians in particular how are you leaving the church so going back to the initial topic of uh how we you know how how we share a story how we share information how what the narrative is because everyone has a narrative um, it doesn't have to be malicious, but like the way you communicate something, there, your bias shows up and all of that, and it has Im impacts other people. So, um, I think it's time for us to be fair and to humanize people again. Don't go with however the growing platforms are talking about things don't whatever you do don't be that way especially with your family members <laughs> with your friends uh it's just it's really sad that people think wow i'm like such a smart person i am like so exemplary i am so like you know, like the Bible people that weren't afraid to speak out, like prophets and all of that. And the truth is, you don't know how to talk. And you don't know how to line yourself up to what God is doing. You may think, oh, well, I'm, I'm in the truth. Every doctrine that I believe in is, is right. And everyone else is wrong. And then, like, as a leader, you exemplify that behavior and you're growing little disciples of people <laughs> that are being like you instead of Jesus. So I, I 
posted something on my community tab, I think it was yesterday, about let your humility lead your confidence. Because I can arrive to all of my conclusions about the Bible and I can have really good reasons to be confident that this is biblical and I'm right and everyone else is wrong. Poor them. <laughs> but where does that leave God? At the end of the day, God is the one that actually knows everything. Okay, so get off your high horse. Okay, your confidence, boot it down to second place. Okay, humility first. God is the one that knows everything. God is the one that's right about everything. And God knows when, like, when and how to speak to people is appropriate. Um, so you need to be led by him in every situation. And please avoid generalizations, tainting your opponents as the worst of the worst, just because you want to prop yourself up as like the one that is in the truth, the one that is the holiest ones, the most righteous ones on the planet. Stay away from being a know-it-all. Stay away from spiritual pride. And let's like lean towards uh, just being mindful that God is the one that is leading us. And God is the one that rescues people. And God is the one that will um, inspire us in the way that we should interact with other people. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm. Joy to